There's literally nothing else left for me to see. Nothing. An ocean of emptiness. Slowly. I finished the game multiple times, so. With a torch. And I finished once Denial Infernal, Dark Run, and once Resentment Dark Run. Now we wait for chapters to unlock. Uh, what we're gonna do though is a full feedback and a full review for Darkest Dungeon 2 Altar of Hope update. Between the mythos of ancient cultures was not a new area of study for either of us. That's what we're gonna do but it was there that we first noticed the pattern. The crossroads <laughs> where lost souls hope to find their way. To know the abyss, one must embrace it. Hunted, harried, a fugitive seeking to outpace the past. Murderous melody lingers long after the final chord has been struck. So, the altar of hope. Darkest Dungeon 2, the latest update. Um, we're gonna do a full feedback and a full review for the game. And everything that I encountered on the run. Finished. In under 50% alter progress. Both chapters, Denial and Resentment, during Light Runs, okay, Runs with a Torch, and during Infernal Runs, or better to say Dark Runs, multiple times, during Light and once during Dark for both Denial and Resentment. I tested all classes. And I tested all subclasses on a previous patch, they haven't changed a thing. What changed? They nerfed your damage output. But they also nerfed enemies. There is a huge change now, when you reach the final encounter for every map. Where instead of a two fights against cultists, you get only one fight. And the first fight is way much easier, then the second fight is only Deacon or Cardinal, the third fight is always the Exemplar, and the Mountain is also a bit easier now, because you're gonna fight against Cardinal and then Deacon instead of Exemplar into Cardinal and Deacon combined, and you're gonna nuke you out and then you're supposed to fight the boss. Okay, so in those regards it's way much easier now why they did it. First of all, it was absurd how hard it was on a previous patch. I barely finished the game five times for both chapters, even though I had all subclasses unlocked and everything unlocked. And second of all, since they introduced how you level up heroes and your stagecoach and everything, we're gonna go to the altar now. They also nerfed some enemies because they plan to release chapter 3, 4 and 5 and then it's gonna be valid, I guess, because the difficulty is gonna go up as you move onwards. Chapter 3, 4, and 5 are not available right now. Now, the main question here that a lot of people ask me, how's the game, is it difficult? Yes, if you start the game for the first time, and yes, if you never played Darkest Dungeon 1. This is still, even though it's an easier difficulty, a bit easier difficulty now, it's still a very hard game. 
and without 20 or 30 hours in the game for you to chase hero shrines over here, do not even think about finishing chapter 1. Alright, if you don't know how the game works, and you know how the game works, you need to pay attention on positive quirks, to mix them up with other teammates, okay, because every team build is absolutely valid, everything that depends now is how well you pick quirks, positive quirks, negative quirks, and how well you pick subclasses, okay, you unlock subclass, subclasses through alter. Every, basically, every hero has its defensive version, offensive version, and support version. Okay, and every hero basically can cover from spot 4 to spot 1, depends on a subclass and end on a quirk of how you wanna play. For new players, it's an extremely hard game. I rest every run, I never had a single wipe of the team. The only time when I failed was at the mountain, at the final boss, and it was usually, in 99% of cases, resentment boss sitting side. That's where I got killed 4 or 5 times, at the very end of the game. I never had a wipe during a map. And I heard that a lot of people had wipes on map 1, map 2, and I guess why is it so? Because they don't know how to pick a team, they don't know how to use skills, they don't know where to go on a map and what to prioritize. And what you upgrade on the altar now. Because now you need to think about 5-6 different things while you play, not only on combat. Uh, on a scale from 1 to 10 for beginners, this is 10 out of 10. For me, when I started, it was close to 10 out of 10. Now I would say the difficulty is 7, 8 out of 10 of how hard the game is. I guess I need to see other chapters too. As far as quirks go, there are some broken ass quirks, positive quirks that can completely change the run and how you play. Okay, flat damage quirks mostly, and if you combine them well with a subclass, for example, a quirk that gives 10% range damage, and then there is a subclass that gives 25% damage, range damage, that's 35%, you find a trinket with 20% range damage, that's 55 and then you can steamroll through the entire game only with one trinket and solid quirks. Now you won't always get solid quirks. Okay, and for the beginners, it's recommended for them to play as a wanderer subclass, or better to say, basic class, because that's how you accumulate candles. Everything about this Altar of Hope patch is about candles. Accumulating candles so you can level up and make progress as fast as you can. By as fast as you can, there is no single run that you're gonna reach the end without 3 to 5 hours. Depends whether it's during daylight or whether it's infernal night. Okay, so... Let's go to Alter. And see the main changes. As I said at the beginning, this is bugged out unfortunately, but icons are here in the bottom left. Uh, the most important upgrade would be the journey, and that's the main feedback and the main problem about the game and how much it delays your time and how brain dead it actually is. Once you unlock journey to the max, you unlock inventory slots that are the most important. You also unlock drops along the way, but inventory slots. With maximum stage coach unlocked, you get only 22 inventory slots. I fill them up in less than 5 minutes of play, and then I waste at least hour, if not hour and a half, in a 5 hours long run to organize inventory, because of the stupid inventory. That's the first thing that the devs should change. You should start with 30 inventory slots. I don't want to play into Fator every time. Go for the boss that gives 25 inventory slots. I want to chase other bosses too. And their trophies are completely useless compared to Fator boss. Uh, what was it? Child. And it's trophy. 
with 25 inventory slots. There is no playing without inventory. You need to accumulate combat items, you need to prepare for the final boss and get healings, blind, bleed and so on, holy water, it doesn't matter. Then you need in items to accumulate, not waste them on a third map so you can be prepared for the mountain, okay, and all of that takes spots if you don't have the boss head that gives 25 inventory slots, you're basically fucked. And that same applies for infernal runs and for regular runs. It just fucking sucks, you should start with 30 inventory slots. I can't even explain how time-wasting it is and how freaking annoying it is. I don't enjoy doing it. 200 hours in a game. In all patches. So far. There is nothing fun about it, okay? Rotating items. Also, when you drop items, you gain shit. You should gain at least a bubble or a click or... I don't know what, a candle if you drop a unique tree. What's the point of having items in a very small inventory and once you drop them you gain nothing out of them. There is no satisfaction for the player. It's only annoyance and it's only additional stress and it's time wasting. So all of that that I counted, inventory slots, bus trophies, rewards, what you gain for ditching items, those things need to be changed ASAP for the game to be more fun and more enjoying. You, you can up the difficulty with enemies, buff them up, because now they're not strong enough. Buff enemies for the difficulty. Not fucking inventory. Inventory is your main enemy, man. It's not enemies. It's inventory. The hardest thing in the game is to organize inventory and then it's the game knowledge and how well you pick quirks and team composition. And how well you pick dots on a map where you wanna go. Okay. And then it's combat. Because if you know how to do those things, you're gonna know how to play. In turn based man. Combat is actually on a poor fifth spot in the difficulty. Inventory is number one. Because it's fucking retarded. 30 spots minimum for the start in a stagecoach. Also, Infernal Flame takes a spot in a stagecoach as an item. And that means when you play during night, you only have three stagecoach items equipped. Count Infernal Flame. Put Infernal Flame somewhere else so we can equip four items. Because the game bombards you with stagecoach items and you don't have anywhere to put them, okay? There's very little space. <sighs> so let's see the resourcefulness. Resourcefulness is fine. But I usually end up runs with a few hundred bubbles. I don't use them at all. And I found a pretty simple solution for bubbles you buy stagecoach items with bubbles you buy combat items and in items with relics problem solved you're gonna balance it out now you buy everything with relics and you only buy trinkets with bubbles just a little switch you buy stagecoach items for bubbles and problem is solved very simple, because every time I end up with 200 bubbles. Because the game bombards you with trinkets. Non-stop. Especially if you know how to play and where to chase trinkets. Then bubbles are useless. You don't have anywhere to spend them. Renown is... Cosmetics, I don't even wish to speak about it. Companionship that's coming soon, that would be, I guess, for relations. That are the second most important thing in the game. Aside from knowledge, it's relations and how well you organize your team. Whether they love or hate each other. 
and that was done really well. I, always, when you start, you should always aim for relations and nothing else, because they are just important. So that would be for uh, the Interpret Coast. The next one would be beaten, broken souls. this, and yet our fortune the working fields. Eh. I've seen some early trinkets here that unlock later on, after 50, 60 trinkets, those trinkets that could be useful when for beginners when they start, they unlock after 50 or 60. I don't care about them, but I would if I was level 1 and start unlocking. Okay. Same can be said about... I, I think it needs to be a bit reorganized. Garbage items should be unlocked first and not the other way around. Some crazy good items are unlocked early on. They should be unlocked later on. Here. Aside from that, I believe the game is way too grindy. Look at the amount of candles. And how much it costs to unlock a single item. I unlock them nearly all. I can unlock them all if I want to now. But it's way too fucking much. It's grindy because you need to invest points into, into all of this. You need to invest points into the living city. Okay, into every hero, not to mention how much it's important to have all subclasses unlocked and everything that goes, you know, basic stats and so on. I like how it's done. I will just nerf the amount of candles by half. So it takes a bit less time when you play the game. So that's 64, 32 candles for everyone. And around 20, 22 for bounty hunt. Heck, speaking about bounty. First of all, I wish Bounty Hunter was available every time in the end. If you want to make him as a Bounty Hunter, okay, he spawns periodically. Sometimes he spawns, sometimes he just doesn't spawn at all. And he only casts candles, okay, and for the starters, they want to accumulate candles and this one takes away candles from you so this is a mega late game hero once you unlock everything okay that exists that's when bounty hunter can shine but for bounty hunter to really shine you need a hundred hours if not even more 150 hours in the game and he was probably meant for later on for chapter three four five okay so if you really want to play a bounty hunter, reduce his pricing candles, one candle for example, okay, for people to actually have fun, you can easily play without him too, and make him available more up. Even if he was free all the time, I wouldn't change anyone in the end because he ruins relations. I play to have relations in yellow. After the first map, I want to see all of them yellow. Okay. When I add a bounty hunter, I ruin relations. Relations are more important. Bounty hunter doesn't have relations. And that's extremely bad. It doesn't matter if he has all skills, Master. Relations are more important. Relations, they give you. Stress heal, they give you HP, they give you buffs, they give you secondary attack, they give you defense. They give you tokens. Bounty Hunter doesn't give shit. Out of all of those things that I that I said, he doesn't give a fucking thing. He just takes away candles for updates, nothing else. I see him useful once the full game is out in chapter 3, 4, 5. When you're really, really fucked, okay, after 10, 15 hours of playing with memories and so on, with everything unlocked, basically, and then Bounty Hunter comes in and saves the day. But right now, Chapter 1 and 2, he, he doesn't have any point. Any point. At all. So, 
so the only thing that I would change here is 32 candles instead of 64. And it would be 10 times better. After the living city at the end we got the timeless memory. wood memories. The memories! Warms the mind. I did not even test memories because I finished all without memories. Memories make your heroes stronger, more resistant, they give speed, damage, death's door resist, disease resist. Damage over time resists and so on as you unlock and so but it casts candles. Okay, and again this is mega mega late game. It wasn't even meant for the for the first two chapters. And I guess it, they're still testing it, they need to balance it out. I don't wish to speak about it because it ain't important. You can finish the game without it. Without a single freaking candle into it. Okay. Sounds useful for chapter 3, 4, 5. Once it's out, then it's fine. Because who survives transfers to the next run. You start from chapter 1 to chapter 5. And they just get stronger and stronger. You keep quirks. And so on. That's a great idea. But right now it means shit. It ain't important. Overall, I believe the game needs to be harder than it is right now, but not harder in terms of waste my time, harder with multiple fights, multiple ambushes, multiple crap that just gonna delay and delay and delay. I believe it needs to be faster with less ambushes, but harder fights. So you can finish faster. And of course with a bigger inventory so you can advance faster. With prices and balancing. <sighs> There's a lot of items I can speak about. For example, uh, we, we can pass through every fucking thing that exists. Okay. I can also unlock all now, and then we can pass through it. I won't unlock heroes, I don't even need subclasses, I know what they do from the previous patch. Let's unlock all. For tools of I hope I have enough to unlock Such all. Go with drink as well. Now we're gonna pass through everything. What I believe is good and what should be changed. And overcome it. Every twinkling recollection is another implement at our disposal. There's also hero items too. I can't pass through them, I haven't unlocked everything. Fair things for the follow. But I know what they do from the previous patch. Hero items are good. Uh, I wouldn't change a fucking thing with hero items. They cover all subclasses. Every hero has three trinkets. Or three current subclasses. And that's fine. Trash kit was the last. I would stomp the game with Trash Kid, by the way. Uh, I can say we unlocked all items in the game. It says 92% because in the living city, there are hero upgrades. They give their own unique trinkets already set. Ablative powders. Useless. Delete from the game or change. 
useless. Academic cash location scouting. It says it's rare. They are far better. To reduce price, maybe, for this shit. Crazy good item, adrenaline tonic. I wouldn't change a single stat. Concoctions and powders, production, all of those things that actually produce stuff are good. Not only this one, every stagecoach item that produces stuff is good. Can be useful for mega beginners. Otherwise, completely useless item. Armor repair kit, extremely good thing. In the end. Garbage. I don't know what to do with relics and bubbles, and this increases quantity, at least make it increase more. I would never equip this on a stagecoach. Okay. Never. Change this shit. Again, bandages, extremely good for mega beginners, completely useless, I always drop them, even when I don't have a single combat item. Bear trap. Great for those tricks when you play first to remove dodge from enemies, and only for that, basically every item that does something like bear trap, explosives, bombs. Trap spikes. They are used to remove buffs from enemies. Armor, dodge, and so on. They're absolutely great, essential to play. It doesn't matter what you equip from all of those traps, they all do the same thing. Pack the damage and the passive, immobilize, so on and so forth. The only important thing is to remove buffs from enemies. It doesn't matter what you throw at them, what kind of trap. Blasphemous Idol, absolutely crazy good. Wouldn't change a thing. Stagecoach equipment, you know what? If you could have 20 stagecoach items as you move on instead of 4, then it would be very useful. Because you only have 4, it, why would you... You got 22 fucking slots when upgraded. When you're a beginner, you got 14, 12. Where will you put freaking stagecoach items? Now imagine if it's 200% increased looting chance. You're gonna stop on every 30 seconds to drop shit. If the inventory was bigger, then it makes sense. If the stagecoach was bigger, then it makes sense. Otherwise, I would change this shit. Flat stress resist. Yeah. Again, good. For those that learn how to play the game, completely useless other way around. You can always control stress if you know what you're doing. Aside from the end. Uh, stealth, good on squishes, the essential for runaway, for black doctor, for grave rubber, for basically for all squishes. Extremely good on a leper, poet, monarch, leper, book of creative insults, great on men at arms, vanguard, sergeant, subclasses, great on helium carcass, can be good on a highwayman, yellow hand and rogue, great item. Order, location, scouting, again. I wish it occupies some other spot like you got. Maybe in a stagecoach. Four slots for rare stagecoach items. And then you got eight spots around your stagecoach for shit and garbage items like this. You know. Then it would make sense to use it. Right now it's forever. Again, good thing for beginners. Poetry completely useless at least for me completely useless 
ablative powders, clothing pan, it was brush, shimmering powders, powders and loud danum by 6 per stack. We wouldn't have this issue and the problem if the inventory was bigger. Again. And it occupies a stage, coach, slot. That's also very small. Change something. Great item, boxing gloves. Completely useless burns burn all. Completely useless. I always ditch it first when I see it. And don't make me start about mold. Goddamn fucking mold and when you created mold. You can put a fucking needle in a stagecoach and then you smack an obstacle and you see a mold. For 150 hours you see a mold. It's like someone threw shit at you. Not an item. Fucking shit. In your face. Calming incense. Great. Both for beginners and those that play. Because it's multiple. On two targets. Stress heal in the end. Gandalf of hope. For fuck's sake. E remove candles from inventory you already have very little space even when upgraded to the max and then comes candles that are extremely important that occupy inventory space and they occupy one inventory space for two candles i drop candles when i play because i always go to the end i never stop at first second third the end i always go to the mountain and I always have a problem of candles in the inventory. And then I'm dropping candles and then I have a lower amount of candles when I finish. Put them somewhere else. Where is mastery point? Put fucking sign for a candle and how many candles you got. That's the worst mechanic. I mean, I love candles mechanic for upgrade and so on. But during gameplay it's the fucking worst thing that exists. This is the, the first thing that should be changed. Fucking candles. And how much spot they occupy. Candles and chocolate, one of the best in items in the game. It should remain like this, it's absolutely crazy good, especially when you get it at the start. The currency, whatever, bubbles, shall dust. Useless. I always dish this shit. Useless. If it was give stealth and remove stealth, then I might consider using it. Only remove. Useless. Fill hospitals is good, but again, uh, you see, uh, you have fill hospitals is rare, that's what I'm talking about. Four slots for rare items in a stagecoach, and eight slots for garbage stagecoach items above. And then you equip med, like hospitals, as a rare in the bottom, and then you go and equip, I don't know, some other shit that's not rare above. Producing restorative items. There's a lot of restorative items. This can also backfire, occupy your inventory. Basically, inventory is the biggest problem in the game. Traveling heal is great. Absolutely great. Poultice is... Right now it's useless, because very few enemies do stun. Okay. Very, very few of them. You're gonna get stunned like in five hours, you're gonna get stunned twice. If ever. But twice. I, let's say twice. So uh, you can use it for the denial and gain pass. This. You keep it in your inventory, you reach denial mountain, and you apply this in the end before entering the fight with the brain on your downturn. Or on your squishy on whatever, okay? But other than that, this item's useless. It might be useful in chapter 3, 4, 5. 
bleed resist. I usually drop them when I don't have space, so that says it all, I guess. Garbage that I never used in my life for 200 hours of game time. Floating powders. All this is garbage item. It should occupy some other inventory slot in the stagecoach, as I said. Rare items below. Shit items above. And then you can decide to use the shit. One of the best items in the game, Kraus Pit. You wanna fight the cultists. There is no fighting the cultists without this. You put it on your high speed hero. You apply this and you remove dodge. Fuck bleeding, it doesn't matter and reduce speed and move resist and so on. The only thing that matters here is AOE. All enemies remove dodge, remove armor. Absolutely crazy good item. One of the most important items for beginners or for those that play long. Uh, now, I already said I would like to see all of this crap stagecoach equipment somewhere else, not here in those four slots. Additional slots are required for crap like this. 15% location scout. Dartboard. Crazy good item to have before the final boss. For the final end. I never used that cap spores in my life. To me personally, it's completely useless, and I finish game multiple times, all chapters. What can I say about it? This is the best thing that you can get on the map. Okay, after the creatures, then. Absolutely crazy good. Move is more useful than stun resist. They can remain. Complete garbage this item, by the way. Mega garbage. That occupies slot and nothing else. Uh, I said that for those things that you throw at enemies, cocktail and AoE, Greek fire, extremely good. Both of them, Greek fire is better. Because it's AoE. But they're both extremely good. Fisherman's net, good with that trinket. You can stun enemies. If you combine this fisherman's net with a trinket, and only then it's useful. Other than that, it's garbage. But if you have it, it's non-stop stun. And here we are with mold. Can you delete mold from the game? Please. Delete mold from the game. Stale bread, great. Apples and cheese, mandatory. The best freaking food that you can get is steak and spuds. I wouldn't change a fucking thing with this. <laughs> this is a useful item. Food barrels. Because inventory is very small, if you have this, it's gonna be a bit easier along the way. Flapjacks are nice, I like it. I wouldn't change a thing here. Damage in Sprawl, damage in the Shroud, damage in Fator, damage in Tangle, all of those are good. If you get them early on, extremely good. They changed the run completely. Mandatory healing self. Triash kit is OP as fuck. I love it. Absolutely great item, holy beat steel. Holy water can be very useful if you have a leper in a team. They can be useful in a multiple ways, to be honest. It's a good item. Icebox. 
God forbid you have things that occupy slots even more, okay? You don't have inventory slots and then this thing occupies even more space. Great item, Iker Bomb. Kinda useless. If you have it, use it, but... Whatever. Infernal Flame. I wish it gives more candles. When you play... In darkness it ain't enough on a success run you gain 70 candles with a torch without in dark runs with all of this buffs it sounds like you're gonna get 200 candles no you, you barely gonna get a hundred and below that if you go for the bus 70 to, to 100 candles it ain't enough it should give more Useless item, completely useless item, invigorating intoxicant, because why you should use this before the boss? So you don't die on a death's door, but you'll always gonna have items that heal, that are way more important than death door resist. You'd rather heal on a death's door than use additional death's door resist. Useless. It might be combined with some shitty heal you become solid like five percent heal okay only two points of health and that's door resist then it would be good other than that it's garbage traveling flame drain is absolutely crazy good item for a stage coach laudanum is probably the most important thing for everyone especially Especially for beginners. When you see Laudanum, you buy fucking Laudanum and you don't conserve Laudanum when you play. If you see one point of stress, you insta-heal that one point of stress with Laudanum. It's cheap with a discount. If you get discount on it, it's even cheaper. And everything in this game is about candles and stress. And Laudanum is great for stress. Positive banter. Banter is extremely important. When you see a positive banter, you go for it immediately. It doesn't matter what percentage it is. Traveling heal also. Same can be said about this too. Now, I found it useful and I was starting the game. Medicinal herbs. And they combine well with one trinket for the Plague Doctor. And only then they're useful. For mega beginners. I throw the shit when I see it though. Bandages, anti-venom, and burn salt. Useless. It's fuck. Change this shit. And it's rare. What's even funnier? Medicine chest is rare. Meditative totem. It says it removes negative quirk 67%. I feel like it's more 40% than 67 In my personal experience so far. Maybe up the chance a bit more. 78. It always sells me, okay? Whenever I want to remove a negative quirk that annoys me the most, this thing doesn't remove. When I want to remove a negative quirk that's whatever, then it removes. Maybe the best stagecoach item in the game is Merchant's Guild Seal. This counts on everything. If you can find this, it's probably the best. Mop and bucket, garbage. Disgusting garbage. Produce poultices, items, whatever. With this shit. Same I can say about neutralizing powders. Useless. Eh, this is good. Because it's applying the in. That's no resist. This is good. You keep it for the final boss, not during the map. You never use it during the map. Only for the final boss, for the mount. Noise maker, absolutely great to apply on on tanky characters, on leper, on hellion, highwayman, bounty hunter, men at arms. You can also apply on Grave Rubber if you have three tokens for dodge, dodge plus, and then you apply down. 
Absent in Titan. Uh, great item to remove dodge from enemies. Again, I say every item that says trap in description, great to remove dodge and armor from enemies. Pipe weight, one of the best items in the game and cheapest. Everything that gives yellow positive relations is absolutely great. Saying can be set up for playing cards. Clear corpses. There are heroes that have spells to clear corpses. This occupies only one slot for consumable. I usually drop it. The shit can stun. It's extremely good. It's extremely good. Milk soaked linen. Only great if you have a leper. And only great if you go for Leviathan boss fight in the Shroud. Other than that, it's pretty much useless. Traveling heal is great. Restorative herbs. Rose pig is probably the best fucking thing in the game. As far as food goes. Amazing. Scrap grenade, again every trap and every grenade is absolutely crazy good in this game. There is no playing without it. Shimmering powder is useless, I think. Maybe, maybe sometimes it can save a plague doctor or a runaway, but basically it's useless. Hero shrines location scouting is mandatory for beginners. To me right now it's completely useless. Clear days and stun gain speed. Tch. Could be good on denial boss, but again healing is more important. I would never take this shit to remove stun instead of healing. Smoke bomb, one of the best items in the game. Maybe a bit too OP, because it adds two points of blind on enemies. Maybe it should add one. Just maybe. You can spam buses, mini buses, with smoke bombs. And they're gonna miss in 50% of time. Songbook of Amorous Ballads, again, everything that gives yellow is crazy good. I wouldn't change a thing. Again, this shit is OP as fuck. If you can go combo Songbook of Touching Dirges into a pig, you gain three yellow dots. And you gain stress, then remove that stress with a pig. They combine really well. It's always good to have speed, but in some cases you want to have low speed. It depends what trinkets you're wearing, I guess. You need to pay attention to your trinkets and your quirks when you apply this item because it can ruin your entire run. Poultice useless item. All poultices are useless. If and only if they heal 5% and give resist, I would consider taking them from time to time. But other than that, I always ditch them. No matter if it's in items or combat items that provide flat resists. Terral dust, I only found it useful on a lap, on a, um, on a jester. You repeat Pinelli. And on no one else. I am thinking right now who, who could repeat a spell. And I only see Jester. Valid for this site. Maybe Leper would withstand twice. Mandatory this shit with, with dodge. <laughs> Again, all of those creature den, monster den items are great.
all items that deal damage are great. This is... You can only find it in Oasis once you upgrade a stagecoach. And you should conserve this shit for the final boss. Because it's great. Mineral rich spring water. If you can get invigorating stew, it's great. I wouldn't change a thing. Again, steel pot produces uh, invigorating steel. Good item. Both. Stimulants, if you have a crit, you can make an enemy vulnerable. And then you apply stimulants on a leper, and it can go above 100 damage. That's the combo, basically. Speed is always good in the end. Uh, stitching kit is way too expensive. Nerve the fucking price. It heals for shit. And you don't need to heal because you have traveling heal. Stitching kit needs a complete rebalance. I, w I wouldn't pay two relics for it. Not to mention ten. I buy it only when I'm fucking rich and I don't need relics. But it's useless. Storage trunks, I would raise them to plus 8. Same can be said about strong box, same can be said about jumbo storage trunk. This should be 12 at 6. 12. Because the bus gives you 25. This should be 12. Reduce negative banter is great. Location scouting, I guess, good when you don't have anything else to equip. But basically, it's garbage. One of the best items in the game that you can throw is this Thunderclap Grenade. It can also stun enemies. And this thing can produce Thunderclap. It's good. Glimmer of Hope. When you start the game, you have hope non-stop. When you unlock all items. And that's the main problem with the game that I'm seeing right now. When you go with day runs, okay, torch runs. Call it whatever you like. You open a new game. You start. And in the every end, on every quarter, there's a glimmer of hope to buy. And when you run over obstacles... It can drop. It never drops when you unlock all. I played the last five runs. Four or five hours long runs. So in 20, 20 25 hours. In 20, 25 hours, I seen maybe one or two times. A glimmer of hope. It should have at least 60% chance to appear at least for the hoarder and the end. Because it never appears later on. It should be a bit rebalanced of how often you can get. Useless item Toxic Icor. Good item Spore Grenade. Especially with a trinket. Creature Den and Oasis. Good. Good. You should always rush for Creature's Den. Always. Then for the Oasis also. Absolutely crazy good item. Trap Maker Kit. It produces trap items. And I said traps and bombs are the most important thing in the game as far as combat goes. From these trinkets, I wouldn't change the chalice, it's great. Darkenet is great. I wouldn't change a thing. Cleansing Clasp. It's so fucking OP on a leper. I don't have words for it. Right? Because leper never has blind if you give him this item. On my previous run, when I won now, Resentment, Dark Run. This item 
helped the most. Absolutely crazy good night. Hard to trigger, but crazy good. Full heal and full stress heal. And you rotate that between your characters. It's, it's so fucking great, I don't have words for it. Garbage might be good on a grave robber, but then again, I would rather give her crit or blood damage than 66% chance to go to stealth. Because most of the heroes can dodge, armor up, and so on. And they have their own personal stealth. Again, the shit on a leper convert blind to damage. And not to mention, if you go dark runs with leper. It's absolutely crazy. We had to give speed also. Garbage I I would remove this shit from the game. Peculiar pots. All items that have random ally on turn start are crazy good. All. A flame less than 40 days if enemy is the garbage rousing ringer crazy good sneaker standard especially if you play during light on men at arms or on a carcass or poet monarch Flame less than 40 combo apply on hit can be really good, but you need to know how to play the game. Same thing can be really good on a repast characters, only on repast, I would say. Apply to attacker with hit combo. This item, I think only librarian can drop. Charred Litany, if you have a runaway, it's really good, only on a runaway. Can be useful on a Plague Doctor, but better on a run. Again, this is for Arsonist runaway item, can be good. Good on everyone. Especially the speedy characters. Especially those that have AoE. All items on turn end are great. I wouldn't change a thing. Positives, negatives, everything's fine. Good on a runaway. Dodge to dodge plus. Okay, it's fine. For the first, second map. Good on a runaway. Good on a runaway. Good on a runaway. Stars need to align for this item to work on Helion and Leper. But stars need to align to get an extraction. Fisherman's Line, one of the best items in the game, best trinkets in the game, but you need to combine it with with Fisherman's Net and with a scrap grenade. Open vein build might probably out of this. Same, all of those bleeding items. Hellion, Highwayman. But basically, I would never take them. I would always take flat damage, flat crit. Bomb pass is fucking epic on everyone. Great on men at arms, great on everyone. And this 
uh, stained items and and how you merge them with with these things. I believe this shit needs a complete rebalance. All of these items, okay, everything. Because penalties are way too fucking huge, and there are so many better trinkets, these indelible trinkets, than these things. I played a lot, I, I never found a single use for this, because penalties are just... way too huge, that... Basically, when you combine them, it doesn't matter what you combine with what, but when you combine them... It's always that the negative over overwhelms the positive. I believe they all need to be rebalanced, because frankly I would rather take a rare blue item than, than the shit. And I really seen them all. I don't know, maybe I need to play more, maybe I need to play only with them and test, okay, but for example, 100% damage minus 30 damage per hour. One stupid shit happens and you're fucked. And in this game, a lot of stupid shit can happen during combat. No, negatives are just... They overwhelm positives, they need to rebalance all of this. I don't see a point, okay? I don't see a point in any out of this. Unforgettable trinkets. Trust me, they're forgettable. They're not unforgettable, they're forgettable. I usually ditch them when I see them. <laughs> all indelible trinkets aside from the sundial absolutely all of these trinkets are great aside from sundial all of them some are actually OP but they work on, on all subclasses you can really mix them well and they change the run they really change the run a lot all are great from these blues I'll only say what sucks what's good I'll just skip I, I believe these things okay apply days on hit apply speed on miss apply I don't know lower damage on hit, blind on miss, and so on, you know, items like that, they're completely useless. I would never think that. Never. Like this, okay. Apply stealth, but gain vulnerable. Apply something, but gain a negative, and, and so on and so forth. I would never go with it. This, 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 all of this, uh, I would change. I usually ditch them. But if it's each ally and a negative, then it's good. One hero only. This different story. Each ally. Stone Mount is crazy good. Trumpet is great. Arbor Key is great. This is again garbage. Positive, negative. Again, a garbage. These are good. This is garbage. Mega garbage. Immobilize on hit. Why would I apply immobilize on hit when most of the heroes move around? I found it, Trailing Tablet, I, I never had a chance to use it, because I always had a healthy team. So I don't know how it would work if you only have one or two of them. 
and they play with this. Maybe in chapter 3, 4, 5. These are unique trinkets for subclasses now, all of this. And you unlock additional as you as you spend candles into here. I wouldn't change a thing. Every subclass has a specific trinket. They're all good. But really, all of them are good. These indelible hero trinkets. They should call them differently. Indelible trinkets are these, and these should be called differently because they're class subclass specific trinkets. I will change the name of the trinkets on description of the trinkets. And the color, so you don't confuse players. On the bottom line, they are high risk and reward trinkets. The stars need to align for you to go 555 with 5 stress. Sounds good. It's gonna happen in like 0.1% of them that you do this. Unless you wanna do it on purpose and stuff. That's a good stagecoach, trinket organizer. Flat resists. And their mini versions. Let health and their mini versions. All of them over here. Okay, everything that gives resists. All of this. Everything that you see is garbage. Complete and fucking garbage. Because there are so many better trinkets than this. And then there's this epic... Trinket, Grated Gear, Gilded Mind, that's worth it, okay, even it's lesser versions, Gilded Mind, and I don't know where is the white one, there is the white version of it, oh, here, these three are great, everything else sucks over here, because I would rather equip something like Flat Damage, or Flat Crit, than Resist Bleeding, and in most cases it would to bleed, because there are spells that heal when bleed, heal when blight, heal when burn. Consumables that do the same. Okay, sometimes it's good to have those damage over time effects. Geraldo, thanks for the follow. So, you, in most of the cases, 80% of time you want to be damaged with damage over time, instead of flat damage, because then you can heal. Flat damage, you can't heal. You can, but if you find consumables, of course. Eh, now, uh, what's left? Speed, great. Bastrops. I don't even want to check them out, because I know at the start that Harvest Child has the best freaking trophy in the game, and I said it how it's the main problem aside from candles, okay? The only trophy that you care about when you play and you want to finish the run without headaches is this one. Everything else, all other boss trophies, you don't even need to look at them, because you need it three slots. Now, if they decide <clears throat> for a full game release to go with a bigger inventory, minimum 30 slots, minimum 30, then I can consider taking trophies from the other bosses. Only then. Right now, you should not even go for other bosses. You should go for Harvest Shark for the inventory slots. Until they decide to change things. I don't like to play and waste fucking time. 
on sorting out inventory. And this is the only thing that saves you from that in the entire game. It's a head that doesn't give you headache. This one. Ah, Warhorn is great. Absolutely great. This is garbage. Wax. Whetstone is great. Whiskey Barrel is good. Whiskey Bottle is good. Whiskey Flask is good. Especially for beginners. Produce whiskey. One of the better items in the game is the wild tea. Bow and items is great stagecoach equipment. And that's about it. It's dope. I said what I believe it sucks. And what's good, what should be changed, what's useless. Basically, right now. This game has three huge problems, and all start with inventory. Inventory slots. It all starts with inventory slots. So, the first thing that should be changed should be more slots. The second thing that should be changed is candles. So they do not occupy slots. And the third thing that should be changed is difficulty. It should be a bit harder. It shouldn't be as absurd as on a previous patch Oblivion Ingress, but it shouldn't be like it is right now. It should be something in the middle. Out of those two. If they can find the right balance for it. Something like that. The game ain't user-friendly, especially for new players. Maybe, maybe consider taking, like, you have chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 planned. Maybe give chapter 0 for people to learn how to play the game. Because if they never play Darkest Dungeon 1, they gonna get stumped in Darkest Dungeon 2. Because Darkest Dungeon 2 is unforgiving. Uh, in Darkest Dungeon 1, you had slow progression learning curve okay and then you learned how every item works on every next run here when you start darkest dungeon 2 the game just throws everything in your face everything including all skills all subclasses all items quirks positives negatives everything is in your face immediately so maybe have a chapter zero for slower progression, so people can actually learn how to play. <clears throat> that also might be for the full release. Or better to say you need a good tutorial. It ain't enough for you just to write over here. People need to experience how everything works. I mean, this is a great tutorial. Absolutely great tutorial. It has all essential things in it, but one thing is to read, and the other thing is to test something. The fourth problem is how grindy the game is. Reduce freaking candle costs at least on here. Instead of 64, let it be 32. So, inventory slots, candles, boss trophies, candles and inventory slots are directly connected to the boss trophies. They're gonna be more useful instead of going for the plus 25. Difficulty and one easier map for beginners. Tutorial map, call it how you like schedule cast so you can progress faster because every run is four or five hours long do you believe that everyone will sit down and play for 150 or 200 hours you need a faster progress then of course some trinkets rebalancing and higher and harder difficult with the upcoming chapters 
And the last thing that I want to talk about after all of this is in my point of view at least and the things I like the most enemies variety and maps variety it ain't fucking enough it just ain't enough right now we got four and a half maps that's way too little it gets way too repetitive especially when you spend 150 hours in a game playing through Tangle and Shroud and <clears throat> Fator and then what remains loose give more maps man change colors okay just change fucking colors at least four or five new maps more diversity in goals and bigger diversity in enemies that that's what i would like to see the most aside from balancing diversity basically from what i've seen from the altar and I seen it all. It should be a great game. When it's out. I believe I'm done with grinding. Maybe I'll have like one run a week for fun. Because there's nothing else left for me to see. But I'm gonna start playing something else. I'm really, really, really done with Darkest Dungeon 2, at least with the Altar of Hope. I don't wanna grind that much. And there is no need. Why would I grind if I finished everything? Ah. I don't know if I got anything else to add about it. I guess not. 